Good morning. Welcome to Inside Talk Show. Inside Talk Show, it's an inside job. I'm Carla Elizondo. Happy Thursday. Happy birthday, Mom. Uh, we are continuing the reading up. Well, actually, we're starting a new reading. This is from that compilation from James Allen. This is from the book, The Life Triumphant, Mastering the Heart and Mind. And I have chapter six marked. It's titled, Right Thinking and Repose. I'll read a little bit of this. We must learn to live from the inside out, not the outside in. Do not allow the outside world to control you. We have thoughts. We're always stimulated with information coming in. And we can't help that, right? We live in this world. And sometimes we can't help exactly who we surround ourselves with, family <laughs> and or coworkers. But we can definitely choose what we get emotionally involved with. Like I've said before, which thoughts we take to dinner and romance and hang out with. We must build that muscle of being more disciplined in our thinking. So he goes on to say, so this is chapter six, right? Thinking and repose. Life is a combination of habits, some baneful, some beneficial, all of which take their rise in the one habit of thinking. The thoughts... The thought makes the man, therefore, right thinking is the most important thing in life. Right thinking is the most important thing in life because from that, everything comes. The essential difference between a wise man and a fool is that the wise man controls his thinking. The fool is controlled by it. A wise man determines how and what he shall think and does not allow externals to divert his thought from the main purpose. But a fool is carried, carried captive by every tyrant thought as it is aroused within him by external things. And he goes through life, the helpless tool of impulse, whim, and passion. Has anybody ever called you a tool? It's like, or, you know, I don't mean to be crass, but like, we're, we're being a bitch. And I mean this in the sense of we're not strong. We're not fighting back. You heard the term like, you know, oh, they, they made you their bitch. It's like thoughts are making us its bitch. We are a tool. And we like to think we're strong. We like to think we have dignity and, and strength and we're smart. But are we really? Look at your life. Look at your surroundings. How do you feel? Are you joyous and grateful? Or are you stressed and anxious and angry? That's nobody else's fault. It's so important. It's what we're allowing inside of this, this vessel. We must be better captains, better stewards of this temple. If you have to get off social media for six months, do it. I coach clients and I was telling them the other day, I said, all of my new clients, all of them, during that six month program, have got to detox from social media for that six months. No questions, I do not care. I will take your money and you get no refunds. If you fart around on social media, bye-bye. We have to be more disciplined. I cannot deal with the shenanigans. It's like I always say, the Course in Miracles, we are far too tolerant of mind wandering. We must get it back. But you know what, honestly, our generation is really the first the sweep of this, you know, information age, so much access, so much information. So being gentle with ourselves, knowing that we're navigating waters and territories that our ancestors just did not have to deal with. They had their own, right? They had to deal with the outer wars, physical wars of the physical body, literally. We are dealing with the mental, energetic, spiritual wars on the inside that we can't see. And that's more difficult, I think. I mean, they all have their own levels of difficulty, but the inner war, the wars, we look back at past generations of like, wow, it must suck to have, you know, always been at war and up in arms and all of this, but we're still in it. It's just on the inside and we must see it that way. We must armor up protect protect our our energies our minds and through study and through you know learning that's how we do it 
learning from the past. This is, you know, when it comes to personal development and philosophy and, and growth and, you know, all this information out there, it's nothing new. There is no new idea. A person might have a new spin on it, which is great. It, it refreshes the idea. But there are no new answers to age old questions and issues that humans have been dealing with forever. So humble up, seek help, get coaching, get mentoring, get your nose in a book and be disciplined and be consistent. Mental health, get a therapist, right? It's like, it it truly is an inside job. You, yourself and you, you just gotta go inside and it's, it could be lonely, but it's where you got to start. It can seem real boring, like womp womp, you know, but it's, it's really where all the change starts. So careless, slovenly thinking, commonly called thoughtlessness, is the companion of failure, wrongdoing, and wretchedness. Nothing, no prayers, no religious ceremonies, not even acts of charity can make up for wrong thinking. Only right thinking can rectify a wrong life. Only the right attitude of mind toward men and things can bring repose and peace. Attitude. That is such a big word. Attitude. For so long, I had a bad attitude and my results matched. Attitude. Bob talks about attitude as being a compilation of your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions. It's a cake. Attitude. What is your attitude? Do you have a bad attitude? Do you have a good attitude? Again, look at your results in life. Do people like to be around you? Are you a positive minded person with a positive attitude? Or do you have a bad attitude? A bad attitude about people. It's just stinky, stinking thinking, right? They call it stinking thinking. It's how is my attitude about this? How's my attitude about that? I always have to check my attitude daily, daily about work, about my health about my family, my friends, check my attitude. It doesn't help. Somebody once said, a bad attitude is like a flat tire. It gets you nowhere. You go nowhere with a bad attitude. We have to have a good attitude. And it starts with our thinking. Think positive, think, and it takes effort. Negative thinking and, and, and negative thoughts are free. They're default. That's easy. It takes no effort. So really putting in that extra effort to really, you know, if you were an art gallery, to really curate what, what you allow in to be on display and to be looking at every day. And then, you know, you're just this beautiful, positive, energetic, good attituded person, you know. So I love James Allen. That was a little ditty from that book, but... I hope you enjoyed that. Have a wonderful Thursday. Be easy on yourself. Take care of yourself. Ask for help if you need it. Um, yeah, I'll see y'all tomorrow.